Christy from Inklings and Yarns and today I'm going to show you how to use the rhinestone tool on Silhouette Studio Designer Edition. I am making a embellished t-shirt for Halloween so I've downloaded an image from the Silhouette online store and it's in my library so I'm just going to go to this little book icon to open my library and it's this bat flourish design so I'll just double click that to open it and here it is. Now for my shirt, I am going to do my flourishes in rhinestones, but then I wanna cut my bats out of fabric later on. So for now, I'm just gonna delete those entirely and work only with the flourishes. So I need to open up my eraser tool, which is right here. And you'll notice that with your eraser, you have a few options. You can choose the shape of your eraser, which I like round, and then the size. You can use this little white dot here to expand or contract the size of your eraser. And then, this is important, you want to decide whether to treat your unfilled shapes as solid or outline. So if you're erasing something and you choose outline, it means that it's only going to erase the cut line and you will have open paths from that point. So if you're going to end up with a shape that has two points that are not connected, your blade will actually lift up and then put back down again later on. If you select solid, then when you delete somewhere, it's going to redraw the cut line for you just like that in between your two points. So I actually do want to treat my unfilled shape as a solid and I'm just going to delete my entire bat here and then I also want to delete this bat and what I'm going to do now is zoom in closer just so I have a better idea of where I'm erasing and it doesn't have to be perfect because I can always fix it later. And also with the rhinestone tool, your shape doesn't have to be quite as perfect as it would if you were actually cutting the shape out from paper or fabric. And every time I lift up on my mouse here, it's going to redraw my lines for me so I can check what I'm doing. And then you see these little red dots. You want to make sure those are erased too. So there we go. So you can see this line here and this line here aren't completely perfect. So I can fix them by going into my Edit Points tool. Oops, I have to select my shape first and then going to edit points and then I have all of these points where I can move my line around. Now you'll notice the spots where I erased, I have a whole lot more points than in most of the design. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete a fair number of these because I just don't need them. And then I'm going to just move the ones I have left slightly just so that I have a basic shape here and again I don't have to have this be perfect because we're using the rhinestone tool here and it's not going to cut out the shape exactly and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So there I'm generally happy with the way my shape looks now. And what I'm going to do is go back to full screen and now I'm going to convert this to rhinestones. So there's this little tool, it's a little red box made up of circles and I'm just going to click on that and I want to click on my design and then I have various effects that I can do here. So obviously right now none is selected. I can do an edge fill, a linear fill, or a radial fill. And you can tell at this point, all of those look a little bit sloppy with this particular design. But as I expand the image and make it larger, it starts to look a lot more natural and pretty. So the difference between the three is obviously edge fill only fills your outline. Linear lines up your rhinestones in a very sort of, uh, even fashion and then radial fill 
just gives it a little bit more of a natural look. So if you're doing a rounded design like this one, you'll and you want to fill it in, you'll want to choose the radial fill. If you have more of a square design or a boxy design or anything with straight lines in it, you might find that the linear fill works better for you. For this image though, I really only want my outlines filled. So I'm going to select the edge and then I'm going to keep my rhinestone size at 10 SS because that's the size that comes with the rhinestone kit from Silhouette. You can see they also have options for a 6 SS, 16 SS, and 20 SS. So if you've bought your rhinestones separately, you want to check the size of them and then select the corresponding one. So again, I'm going to go with 10. And then I can also adjust my spacing here and you can see I can get them farther apart or closer together. You don't want them too close together because then uh, when you when it cuts, they'll all be touching and it'll be harder to use. Uh, so I just want it to still look natural but not be too close. So I think one millimeter is a good spacing for this particular design. Next, I wanna make sure that this design is gonna be this the size that I want. So this flourish is going to go over the shoulder of my shirt. So I want it to be about five by seven inches. Right now it's 5.23 by 8.37. I'm actually, I think I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller, but I do also want the rhinestones to kind of look pretty when I'm done. So I think this five by eight is a good size for it. So now I've got the size the way I want it. I've got my spacing the way I like it, the rhinestone size. I know that all of these settings are exactly the way I want them. So now I can go to this release rhinestones button. And when I hit that, it's actually going to turn each one of these little circles into its very own ungrouped shape. So now I can move these independently of each other. And this is good because you can see there's a few spaces where the lines just look a little bit funny and wonky and I wanna change them a little bit. So for the most part, it looks like a good design, but there are just a few spots in here that I'm not a huge fan of. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And then for example, right here, I've got this little guy sort of hanging out in the middle of nowhere that I'm gonna delete. And then I just wanna move these two a tiny bit so that they're not touching. And then inside this curl, I'm gonna delete one of them and move the next one in a little bit just to differentiate that curve a little bit. Same thing down here, I'm just gonna move these around a little and you can just play with how everything looks and move, move whatever you need to move. And now if you wanna actually add more rhinestones, what you can do is select one and just do on a Windows machine, it's Control C and Control V, and on Apple machines, it's Command. So I'm gonna Command C, Command V. Oops. And you see it just gave me, I just copied and pasted a new little rhinestone here. So I'm going to just make this little section a little bit more robust and I'm gonna copy a few more just to give myself a little bit nicer of a curve. So now I'm pretty happy with the way this works, so I'm ready to cut it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom back and I'm going to select the whole thing and then I will just move it and place it on my screen, oops, in a spot that just lets me take up 
the smallest amount of space pop possible. And then uh, you can see on my blog the way I cut this with the uh, rhinestone template material and we'll go on to finish the shirt. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.